In this video, we'll walk through the process of making a work item type horizontal trace matrix. This powerful tool will help you visualize and manage the relationships between different work items effectively. Let's dive in. You can access the trace analysis tool within the modern requirements main menu. Create a new traceability and name it whatever you'd like. However, it's a best practice to choose a name that clearly reflects the type of matrix, either horizontal or intersection matrix and its purpose. So I've gone with HM for horizontal matrix. I've indicated the type of analysis I'll be doing by stating epics to bugs. By default, the intersection matrix is selected so we can change this to horizontal matrix. We are currently doing a work item type trace analysis. Here is where I can configure my work items by selecting an area and iteration path. Please take note of the operators because they can really change the scope of your trace analysis. For instance, if I say iteration path is equal to the larger project or to iteration 1, it will bring in work items specifically from those buckets of work items. Now, if I say iteration path is under the larger project, it will bring in work items from that specific bucket of work items and all the other iterations underneath that project. So keep in mind that when you're using the under operator, you may have a lot of data that is brought into your trace matrix. I can then choose the work items that I would like to have at the top level. In this case, I will select an epic and then I can add filters for linked work items up to 10 different layers of work items. So I will take a look at how epics decompose into features and how features decompose into user stories. This is an Agile project, so I've selected user stories here. However, you can select any work items that are applicable to your project management methodology, such as PBIS or requirements. Before adding my test cases and bugs, let's go ahead and run this trace analysis. As it is, we can very clearly see the decomposition of these work items as well as their link types. This epic has four features associated with it with a child link type. And this feature has three user stories linked to it with a child link type. Now let's go back to the editor and add some test cases to this trace matrix. Let's add some bugs as well so we can see the full decomposition of our epics into bugs. For each work item, we can configure the link types that we want to display. For instance, if we only want test cases that are linked to user stories with a tested by link type to be displayed in our trace matrix, we can configure them here. You can bring in your work item fields as columns for test cases. Let's bring in the priority field. You can move these columns up or down and change the width. Run the trace matrix. There are 4D test cases, and only the tested by link types are displayed. The priority column is also visible, and then there are 13 bugs. I'll close this panel here to make more space. In order to see all of these linked work items directly next to each other, I can turn on the merged view. The titles of the columns have been removed, and all of the linked work items are directly next to each other, simplifying the view. I'll turn the merge view back off. This user story has no test cases, so let's go ahead and create one. You can hover over any work item and click on this edit icon to open that work item. In the Azure DevOps standard window, you can add a link to a new or an existing work item. For this example, I'll choose an existing test case. Once I go back to the editor and run this trace matrix, that test case is updated, so you can see how this trace analysis is produced in real time based on the creation and the breaking of your various links. You can export your trace matrix to Excel in WYSIWYG fashion.
This is what it looks like. You could also generate a smart report of the work items in your trace matrix and export this to Word PDF or HTML. So that is how you create a horizontal matrix using work item types. In the next video, we will dive into how you can create a horizontal matrix using queries. Thank you for watching.